Hey friends, I am so excited to share these brand new five ingredient dump and go crock pot recipes with you. There's not one thing basic or bland about any one of them. They're actually some of my brand new favorites. And you know, I like to give you an entire meal situation. So I'm throwing a little bit of side dish help in too. Just a couple of basic ingredients, some pantry staple seasonings, throw it all in the crock pot and you and me can come home to a delicious dinner ready and waiting at the end of the day. Today we're gonna make some Dump and Go Sweet Baby Ray's Crock Pot Barbecue Chicken. And I've got out two packages of my Good Chop Chicken Breast. Each one of these has two breasts in it. I'll probably just end up using three of these breasts and cook up the other one just seasoned to have with salads this week. But I'll tell you a little bit about Good Chop later. We're going to start by taking an 18 ounce bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce and putting it in the crock pot. The recipe that I originally found years ago used Sweet Baby Ray and that's what it's called. But feel free to substitute whatever you like or have on hand. Now we're going to put in a quarter cup of brown sugar a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon of garlic powder. The recipe calls for a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, but I'm just using about a quarter of a teaspoon. Y'all know I'm a wimp when it comes to hot stuff. Now I'm just gonna stir all of this together down in my crock pot, and I keep my barbecue sauce standing upside down over here, and every few minutes, I'll just squirt a little bit more out of it. Y'all know those squirt bottles are hard to empty out. Now I'm just going to take my chicken breast, nestle them down here in the crock pot. And this is about a pound of chicken breast. And I'm just going to get them all covered and tucked under this barbecue sauce. Make sure everybody's got some on them. Doesn't take this long at all to cook up. I'm going to cook mine on low for about four to six hours. Y'all, look what Granny gave me, her little mini pull string chopper so I can make coleslaw. And I've got a 10 ounce bag of just the angel hair coleslaw. It's just cabbage. And I'll have to do mine in little bits, but that's okay because I just usually make a little bit. Look at that. That's about 10 pulls is all that takes. And if you weren't here the week that Granny made her slaw for us, I'll leave that video linked down in the description box for you. But Granny says the secret to good slaw is getting it grated up really fine like this. And honestly, I think five little spins is enough. When I did 10, it got almost too much. And I went ahead and made the whole bag because I'm going to share this. Granny's recipe is simply two tablespoons of sugar and about a half a cup of mayonnaise. Just mix all that together. She doesn't put any vinegar, any salt and pepper, or anything in here. Another thing that Granny and I both prefer is to not have purple cabbage in our coleslaw. I mean, we'll eat it if we have to, but I do like carrots in it. And if I hadn't already washed up that chopper, I put some carrots in here, but we're just going to go as is. And I don't know about you, but one of my pet peeves with coleslaw is I hate it when it's got a bunch of liquid in it. So I always start with a little bit of a smaller amount of mayonnaise, and then it's going to get liquidy as it sets. You can always add more, but if you add too much, you're just up the creek. Mm. I just tasted it. It's just fresh and delicious. Doesn't have a lot of sweet flavor, soury flavor. It's just really fresh. I mean, sugar, mayonnaise, cabbage. It's delicious. And we'll put it in the fridge and we'll have it later. I get really aggravated when I see what's available and what they're charging for the products in the meat case at my grocery store these days. That's why you're going to see me using Good Chops Meat and Seafood throughout many videos, including today's here, if you're a regular viewer. Good Chop delivers fully customizable boxes of high quality meat and seafood right to your door on your schedule. With Good Chop, I never have to worry about the quality or variety of my meat choices. We've eaten Good Chop's 100% grass-fed ribeyes, filet mignons, wild-caught salmon, free-range and organic chicken breast, ground beef, pork chops, shrimp, scallops, bacon, and more. With over 70 high-quality cuts, 
but they have something for everyone. And you guys know that Patrick's a steak man and Good Chops are the best we've ever had. And I love that Good Chop products are vacuum sealed and flash frozen at peak freshness. So when I'm ready to cook, I have exactly the cuts I want and need right in the freezer on hand. Good Chop prides itself on sourcing meat that comes with no antibiotics or added hormones ever. No artificial ingredients, just the good stuff. So it goes without saying that they back their products with a 100% money back guarantee. Plus, by choosing Good Chop, you're supporting local family farms and independent ranchers right here in the U.S. Unlike many other companies, Good Chop sources its meat and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries. Start enjoying Good Chop today by going to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code MAMAMALE120 or you can click the link in the caption below to receive $120 off across your first four boxes today. Take advantage of this great savings offer for my viewers today by going to goodchop.com slash YouTube, use code MAMAMALE120 or grab that link below and save $120 across your first four boxes of Good Chop today. And a big thank you to Good Chop for being a longtime supporter and friend of our channel. I've been gone about four and a half hours and this chicken is perfectly tender and smells delicious. I'm just going to shred it all up with my meat masher right inside the crock pot. And a little tip whenever you're doing shredded meat like this in your crock pot, if it's a little bit too saucy for your liking, just leave the lid off of it for a few minutes and let it cook and some of that will begin to come out. It had been way too long since we'd had some barbecued chicken. This is a super easy recipe using bottled sauce, just doctoring it up with a little bit of extra kick of brown sugar and vinegar. So delicious, so easy. And let's just take a moment to appreciate the little nibbler corn ears and green bean sides. Those were delicious. And I don't normally like coleslaw on top of my barbecue or chili buns, but I thought I would put it on here for aesthetics, and then I thought I could take it off later. Well, I just went ahead and put a fork into this and ate it together. Granny slaw makes all the difference. Yes, please. I'm a slaw girl on top of my barbecue and chili buns for life now. Today we're going to make some garlic butter steak bites. This is a dump and go crock pot meal. It's not necessary to brown your steak bites. I just had a few extra minutes this morning and I like to brown mine up. And that's the whole reason I bought this new crock pot because you can sear meat right inside of it. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to, or you can do it on top of the stove and dump it right into your crock pot. I'm going to go ahead and put a little seasoning on these. I'm using some anti no nos which is salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and I'm going to put a little bit of Italian seasoning in here too. I've got these just a little bit brown now, and I'm going to scoot them all over to one side of the crock pot. Now I've got some of these little baby potatoes. I'm not cutting them into pieces or anything. I'm gonna drizzle them with a little bit of oil. Just toss them around a little bit here. And I need to season them with the same seasonings that I seasoned the steak with. Let's just toss them around again to make sure everything's got a little seasoning on it. Now I'm just gonna sprinkle a little garlic a little bit everywhere and I've cut up a stick of butter and I'm just going to place these little pieces right over top of everything. It already looks and smells delicious in here so let's put the lid on it. I'm going to set mine to slow cook on high for about five hours. I always get a lot of questions when I say I prep a big salad at the first of the week and we eat off of it all week. And the way that I'm able to do that is by making sure that my lettuce is good and dry. I always use a little salad spinner. I got this one at Aldi, but you will not believe the water that will come off your lettuce once you've washed it. And I keep it in a big Ziploc bag with a paper towel in it all week. And this did go the entire five hours, and then it actually kicked over to keep warm 
for about another hour before I got back in here. Everything looks and feels done and delicious. Well, I can't tell you that it feels delicious, but it smells delicious. I pulled me a little piece of this out to try. It's so good and juicy and tender. So delicious. Another really great thing about this recipe is you could totally do this with chicken or pork or just whatever you have. I like to take the little buttery garlicky gravy <laughs> that is in the bottom of the crock pot and pour it over my steak and potatoes. I split mine down the top so it could soak in. This is not what you think a dump and go crock pot recipe should taste like. This is just a delicacy, so flavorful, so delicious. And if your man likes meat and potatoes, or heck, if you like meat and potatoes, this one is right up your alley. You can tell by our ingredients tonight, this is gonna be a flavorful, flavorful recipe. It's the crock pot marry me chicken pasta. There's nothing I like better than a dump and go crock pot recipe. And I've already got my chicken here in the crock pot. I'm starting by seasoning it with some salt and black pepper. We're also gonna use about a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of paprika, and just a quarter teaspoon, if that, of crushed red pepper. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in a big old tablespoon of minced garlic, and I'm putting in a third of a cup of some diced sun-dried tomatoes. I get questions about sun-dried tomatoes often in the comments, so in case I've missed your comment or question, I just want to answer some of the most common things that I get asked. Can they use regular tomatoes? Well, you can. As a matter of fact, my mom makes Tuscan chicken all the time, and she uses the grape tomatoes and cuts them in half. It tastes great, but I will say these sun-dried tomatoes, they do have a different taste and a different texture. They're also packaged with herbs in an oil. So when you make anything that is Mary Me Chicken or Tuscan Chicken, you miss a little bit of flavor that this adds if you use regular tomatoes. And I think the reason that people ask that is because these can be a little bit pricey. This is an eight and a half ounce jar. This is what I normally always get at Kroger's. It might be more where you are, but I get three uses out of this jar. I have already made one recipe with it. I used a third of a cup today, and I have probably another third of a cup left. For me, that's worth the price. And I'm not disagreeing with anybody. Don't get me wrong. They are more expensive. I'm not arguing that fact, but I'm just kind of giving you the info of, to me, why it's worth buying it. Plus, it's something I keep in my pantry all the time now, so I look for it when it's on sale, I stock up. This recipe does call for two 15 ounce jars of Alfredo sauce. So I'm gonna use one of the Ragu Classic Alfredo. Get every drop out of there with some milk or water. <laughs> For the second jar, I'm using a Ragu Roasted Garlic and Parmesan Alfredo sauce. And this sounds like a lot of sauce, but we're gonna be putting a pound of cooked pasta in here after this chicken cooks. This is a recipe that would be very easy to cut in half for just two people, but I'm planning on sharing some of this with the family. That's all there is to it. It's just dump, go, you don't even stir it. I'm gonna cook mine on high for about four hours. That was one pound of frozen chicken breast I had in here. So I want it to cook high and quick. We'll come check it in a bit. Now that the chicken's done, I'm just gonna remove it from the crock pot. Today, I'm gonna cut it into bigger chunks. Sometimes I like to shred it right in the crock pot, but sometimes I like bigger chunks. While I'm doing this, I've got a 16 ounce box of pasta pulling up over here on top of the stove. You're welcome to use spaghetti here, but y'all know I just don't like those squirmy long noodles. Now that I have my chicken in here, I'm gonna put in one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, and I'm gonna throw in about a quarter cup of Parmesan. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice stir and get all of this incorporated before I put my pasta in. Now we're just gonna put our drained pasta down in here. I'm gonna save a little bit out for a Caesar salad this week, and let's get all of this mixed together. 
Patrick has already been in here taste testing chicken while I was cutting it up and he said it is delicious. At this point, I do have my crock pot turned over to warm. Gonna pop the lid back on it and pull the rest of dinner together. I can't say enough good things about this Marry Me Chicken. This was based on a Luke Bryan cooking in the Midwest TikTok video that I saw and it hit all the marks with me, the cheese, the sun-dried tomatoes, the garlic, all the goodness. I served it along with a big side of steamed broccoli. Guys, this was delicious. You're gonna love it. Be sure and watch this video next for some more delicious crock pot meals. I've been on a real lucky streak this spring finding new ones. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, I send you love from my kitchen. Five ingredient dump and go crock and pot, crock and pot. <laughs> <laughs> crock and roll. Crock and roll. <laughs>